what I love about my mom is that she cooks me nice food and she always provides, she always buys me the things I want even though um, I can manage it and I love her so much. Bye. Having a mother is such a great blessing, not only towards me, but towards my siblings and my father. My mother is such an amazing woman and I'm sure yours is too. Not only is she my mother who's taken care of me for years, through sports injuries and through sickness, but she is my best friend. I've shared so many wonderful moments with her, from laughing like dinosaurs to crying in K-dramas. Even though I can be pretty stubborn, my mother has never, and I mean never, not forgiven me. This is because she loves me, and if I could, I would travel back in time to live every single one of our cherished moments, even though that is every day of my life. Nobody was kidding when they said mothers are strong women. So to all the mothers out there, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day, and I hope you enjoy your day. Go by a lot of names. Mom, mommy, mom, life, mom, cool, grandmother. But my personal favorite is Mamzo. Even though they're said in different languages, they still refer to the same loving person. You are the person that gave us the gift of life, the person that comforts and celebrates us, the person that literally deserves everything good in the world. I know sometimes it may seem that we don't necessarily appreciate you after whatever pity arguments we have, but best believe you are the first person we want to talk to when things go wrong. Just because you have that sort that sense of comfortability, you are our comfort place. You give us that love and treasure and that's a time where we have our inner peace and love. You also do wear a lot of hats. You are the doctor, the lecturer, but my personal favorite hat is when you're the best friend hat. But my personal favorite hat is when we get sushi on Tuesdays. But mom, coming from deep down of my heart, uh, I love you. I appreciate everything you do for me and Mandela. But yeah, I love you mom. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. What we love about our moms are they're kind, loving, compassionate, and awesome. Afternoon Saints, my name is Marsha. Welcome to the City News. Our pre-service intercession starts at 7.30 until 8 a.m. for our first service and for second service from 9.45 until 10 a.m. Our City Life groups meet once a week, which is a great way to fellowship. And since most of the groups are still meeting online, it is not hard to connect with your brethren. So speak to any of the ushers or simply speak to Mamji and she will link you to a group nearest your home. For those of you who offer your love gifts, tithes and offering into the kingdom via debit or credit card, you will notice that we have a speed point that is available before service. So you can swipe your card and keep your slip. And then during offering, you can place that slip into a basket once your offering has been blessed. Dawn with Pastor Tim is every weekday morning at 5 a.m. online. And we also have Terry with Pastor Tim every Tuesday evening online. It is a night of prayer and declaration. So do join us saints because it is such a great way to tap into our corporate faith. If you would like to go ye using any of your skills, talents and time to serve in the house of God. First of all, thank you for having a willing and faithful heart. Secondly, you are able to speak to any of our pastors and let them know what your interests are. And then they will be able to determine in which departments to place you. Saints, we have some exciting news. Our first Go Ye message to teach and preach the gospel has been activated. So our first crusade kicks off on the 29th of May in Rodeport. And if you'd like to join, do make sure that you speak to Pastor Shalane. Family, we offer pastoral care at the City of Zion for all our members. So if you are in need of any counseling, you are able to speak to one of the pastors. Just know that as a member, you are loved and you matter, and that our pastors will always make time for us. Our God is holy. Can we lift our hands and just worship him this morning? We give you all the glory, God. I will lift my voice and I will sing. I will 
those hands wherever you are. Come on. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man sent to praise and treasures the faith are never enough. Then you came along oh. and put me back together. Yes. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid, oh God, to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you sin the all, and you still call me free, come on, declare it, cause the God of the mountain is the same God, is the God of the valley.
Welcome again to another Sunday morning online service at the City of Zion. I'm particularly excited because today is Communion Sunday. Yes, it means by the time we're done with the sermon, we're going to break bread together. So if you were unaware of it, as I run through maybe one or two thoughts, maybe one or two announcements, quickly get something to sip and something to sup so that we can have fellowship together. Every time we go to the table of blessing, there is always a blessing that awaits us. Again, communion get yourself ready if this is your very first Sunday worshiping with us online at the city of Zion I want to say welcome you could be anywhere else but you have chosen to be with us this Sunday morning and we really want to make you feel warmly welcome so if you are on our live chat there is a link that is currently being posted click the link and fill in your details we have a COVID compliant gift it's an e-gift that we would love to send to you a gift we think you will greatly appreciate maybe you are not on the live chat maybe you're not watching it live but this is your very first time viewing us at the city of Zion there is an email address on the screen click it send us your email address we would love to send you your gift again welcome to the city of Zion are we ready for God's word today's word is a prophetic word and every time God gives me a specific prophetic counsel look I will teach somewhere in between but every time God gives me a prophetic counsel it's because there is a miracle that he wants a now miracle that he wants to administer to your life so are you ready as it is our custom, please take your Bibles. Our reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37 from verses 1 to 14. But it is our custom uh, to make a confession when we take our Bible. So do you have your Bible in your hand? If you do, please lift it up. And as we do, repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. Today, as I hear his word, it will take root in my heart and bear a hundredfold fruit in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Normally, I would say let's stand for the reading of God's word, but you may be seated wherever you are seated on your enemies. Our reading again is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37 from verses 1 through to verse 14. Follow me as I read in your hearing. Here begins the reading of God's word. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live and I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came unto them and they lived and they stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord 
for emphasis, let me read verse 7 again. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. Bone to his bone. I bring you a prophetic word simply titled, The Impossible Still Happens. The Impossible Still Happens. Bow your hearts as I pray. Everlasting Father, hmm, you said all things are possible to him that believes these are your children and we believe. Your word says that with you nothing shall be impossible. You are with us and so we are in the arena where the impossible becomes possible. I speak over our lives today and I declare that even as we engage your word, as we engage your prophetic counsel, the power to change our experiences, the power to cause the impossible to become possible is released unto us. I thank you, O oh God, because as we will engage your communion table, we will see the manifestations of your glory like we never thought possible. The impossible still happens because our God is on our side. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. So you will notice in verse 1 that he was brought to the valley of dry bones. I'm sure if it was up to him, he would rather have been brought to the mountain of great fruits, but alas, he was brought to the valley of dry bones. A quick thought that I want to throw out there before we even push through the text is the fact that we need to begin to appreciate that sometimes our greatest opportunities are hidden, are couched in our greatest difficulties. Let me say this again. Sometimes our greatest opportunities are couched in our greatest difficulties. For example, uh, David did not know that when he had to face a lion as a teenager and face a bear as a teenager left in the backside of the desert, forsaken and forgotten even by his friends. Usually the last born should be the one that will be pampered, but he was the one that was left at the mercy of the lions and of the bears while looking after the sheep. David never knew that while he was doing that, one day uh, the experience was that was going to pit him up against a Goliath and when he defeated Goliath his name was put on the lips of everyone that was in the nation he had no idea uh, that this opposition uh, that he was facing the lion the bear that he had to kill that he had to come up against he had no idea that it was a setup to his greatest and 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 and, and most profound on unveiling of his destiny sometimes our greatest opportunities are couched in our most difficult circumstances. I also need you to see that he was brought to the valley of dry bones. The dry bones were already there. Why is this significant? Because number one, we need to settle that God was not the author of the dry bones. You see, there are many that believe that God uses evil to bring about good. There are many that still say that God allows evil so that good can come about. And this is not true. I don't have the time to dwell, to dwell on it and to delve deeply into it. But in my series, five-part series titled, Who is God? It's on this YouTube channel. I tried to break it down and, and to show you that that is not the character of God. It is difficult to believe and, and have whole some faith in a God that you also think Pele is playing a role in your current crisis. If you think that God could have stopped you from going through this calamitous situation and yet he has stood back and he has refrained from doing so because he wants you to learn a lesson. It becomes difficult for your faith to reach its full maturity. God was not the author of the valley of dry bones. He brought him to it uh, and I will show you why but he was brought to it not because a God had had a lesson to teach him. No, no. The reason why he was brought to the Valley of Dry Bones was because he had already been empowered. He had been empowered to overcome that scenario. First and foremost, God says in, Je Je in James 1.13, James 1.13, that he does not tempt with evil and neither is he tempted by evil? The word evil there means trial, trouble, tribulation, and also temptation. God cannot be tempted with trials. 
and neither does he release trials into anyone. You need to establish this in your consciousness that God is good and he only does good. Come on, say it with me. God only does good. Come on, say it one more time. God only does good. Number two that we need to settle is the fact that, please note this, no matter how deep you have prayed, no matter how long you have fasted, no matter how good or holy you think you are, you will face trials, troubles, chaos, and challenges. This is not a curse because I suspect that somebody just said, I reject it. You can reject it all you want. But the Bible says that the sun and the rain falls upon both the good and the bad. The saints of God, as long as we live in this world, no matter how hard you have prayed, how long you have fasted, how good and undeserving of challenges you think you are, as long as you are in this life, you are still covered with this flesh, you will face opposition. Let me tell you why we face opposition. None of them, none of the reasons I'm about to give you, and there are four reasons, has the signature of God on them. The first reason why we face opposition position in this life, no matter how saved you are, is because we live in a broken world. Number two reason is because we have to deal with broken people. Number three reason is because there is a devil that is on the loose and he hates your guts. And number four is because we ourselves are a broken people that make sometimes compromised decisions. None of these things I've mentioned have the thumbprint of God on them. None of them are as a result of God's handiwork. We face challenges because because of these four reasons but the truth about the matter is and this brings me to our third point before we continue with our verse the truth of the matter is we need to also learn that it doesn't matter where you are or what you are going through what matters is who is going through it with you let me say it again we need to settle that it doesn't matter what you are going through what matters most is who is going through it with you you see david puts it this way in psalm 23 though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me david understood that it did not matter who or what he was going through it did not matter whether he found himself in his own version of the valley of dry bones he called his own version the valley of the shadow of death i don't know what your own version of the valley of dry bones is but david knew something that we need to know he understood that for as long as God was with him the Lord will ultimately prepare a table or a buffet of blessings before him in the presence of his enemies Joseph understood the same you must remember that Joseph had received the promise from God and in spite of a promise that was hanging over his head a promise that was confirmed more than once hanging over his head he was sold into slavery and then he was imprisoned for life as a result of a false witness that was leveled against him imprisoned for life in Egypt and in that same Egypt he becomes the viceroy why because when you read it in Genesis it says but God was with him. Joseph understood something that many of us have failed to understand. The fact that God is with us. Again, it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter who has come up against you. What matters is, do you know that in the midst of that opposition, have you settled it? That in the midst of that opposition, God is with us with you you see when we face challenges when i got saved i was under the impression that because i was born again i will not face challenges any longer i remember years ago this is what going on 17 years now when my when my wife was pregnant and the doctor said that my wife the pregnancy was in crisis we're going to lose the baby that was a major moment in my life I mean, we, we, we this we, we were newly married this this not did not make sense and the thought tried to hit my mind that if god is for you have you been here before? If God is for me, if God is with me, if God is in me, if God loves me, why am I going through this? That is the wrong question. And for as long as we are asking that question, we will prolong our affliction, we will extend our chaos. The right question that we need to ask is this, since God is for me, since God is in me, since God is with me, who can be against me? Paul makes it clear to us in Romans 8 when he says, 
if God be for us, who can be against us? If we are asking the former question, we will extend our affliction. Again, the right question to ask, the right statement to establish in your consciousness when you hit your valley of dry bones. Maybe you are in it right now. Maybe you are suspicious it's about to come. Whatever the case might be, when you hit it, you need to settle this in your consciousness that since God is for me, since God is with me, since God is in me, since God loves me, who or what can be against me? Saints of God. I want you to repeat after me. I'm not even going any further. Repeat after me. God is for me. Therefore, who or what can be against me? Let's do, do it one more time. God is for me. Therefore, who or what can be against me? Yes, yes, yes. Again, David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thou art with me. I come to prophesy over your life. He is with you. Stop asking. You remember a blind man, a man who was born blind, was brought to Jesus and they began to ask the question, was it his father that sinned? Was it his mother that sinned? And Jesus, I paraphrase, said to them, that is the wrong question. Stop asking, why is he blind? Stop asking whose fault it was. Stop asking um, if, if, if God had a hand in his situation. That is the wrong question. And even if you got the answer to that question, it's not going to change the man's situation. Too many times when we go through crisis, we are asked asking for answers to questions that will produce no solution to the problem. Jesus said that this situation is for the glory of God. He is not saying that this man was made blind so that God would get glory. He was saying that this man has been made blind but God has enough glory to set him free. That is the question we should ask. If God is for me, you should look at the valley of dry bones and, and reassure yourself that if God is for me, who can be against me? So he found himself in a valley of dry bones. Verse 2 says that when he observed it carefully, he noticed that it was worse than he even thought about. He noticed it was extremely dry. It was even worse than he thought. The next thing, when God and the angel was going to address the problem, they said to him in verse 3, Son of man, can these dry bones live again? He said, only thou know it. And they said to him in verse 4, prophesy. My goodness. I don't know how you read that. But years ago when I read that, it troubled me. It troubled me because I remember one of the days that I read that and the Lord was saying that I need you to do what Ezekiel had done. I felt very different from how Ezekiel felt at the valley of dry bones. When I, in that scenario, I was in my own version of a valley of dry bones and the Spirit of the Lord took me there and he was saying, I want you to prophesy. And I was saying to him, prophesy, I need solutions to this. And you were telling me, prophesy, I need help in this situation. And what you are saying to me is prophesy. I'm a pastor and I've been pastoring now for over 20 years, maybe about what, 22, 23 years. And indeed, I have heard people say that to me. Pastor, I'm telling you that my child is sick and near unto death. And you are telling me prophesy. Pastor, I'm telling you I'm about to be kicked out of my house. And you are telling me prophesy. Pastor, I'm telling you that I have no money and I'm about to lose what I've, what I've worked so hard for and you are saying prophesy if you don't want to help me pastor just say so but don't tell me to prophesy what do you think pastor I've been doing all this while if my prophesying was going to work it would have worked already pastor help me don't tell me prophesy but saints of God the solution was that he was to prophesy if, if look if, if I was also with Ezekiel, I would have looked at the Lord and I would have said to him, but you are here. You, are, you, you just asked me if I thought that these bones could live again. And I've told you that where my faith is, it can't handle that. I don't think they can live again. But you are right here with me. If you are with me, if you are for me, if you are in me and you are right here in the valley of dry bones with me, why won't you make them live again? Why won't you just speak a word to these dry bones? Why are you waiting for me to do the heavy lifting when you are right here with me let me tell you why two reasons number one number one 
in Psalms 115, he says that the heavens is the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of man. God has delegated the earth to the children <coughs> of man. The earth is a physical dimension. And that is why even though man is spirit, man has been given a body which places him in a physical dimension. Man can exist in a spiritual dimension and also in a physical dimension. And because of that, man has the power to speak over this earth, to have influence over this earth, and this earth will respond to him. When God was saying to Ezekiel to speak, is because he, the earth has he given on loan. The earth has he given on lease to the children of man. The second reason why he said to Ezekiel, prophesy, saints, listen very carefully, is because he had given Ezekiel the power to deal with the situation before Ezekiel faced the situation. Did you hear me? Let me say it again. He had given Ezekiel the power to deal with the situation before Ezekiel faced the situation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says that no temptation has seized you except that which is common to man and God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted above what you can bear but along with the temptation the Bible says he has made a way of escape. Saints of God before Moses faced the Red Sea God had already placed a rod in his hand. Before Joseph had to meet with, 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 with Pharaoh who required wisdom God had already placed the wisdom in the heart of Pharaoh. Before you face this opposition God had already given you the power to overcome it. When Moses cried out to God and said God God part the Red Sea. I paraphrase, God said to Moses, you part the Red Sea. The rod has been in your hand. In, ex in Exodus 4.17, God had already said to him, with the rod you would do signs. So maybe Moses had forgotten and maybe you have also forgotten that the Bible is clear concerning you and I when it says, greater is he, Hekayalabate. greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Maybe you've forgotten when the Bible also says to us in 1 John, he says, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. He doesn't say overcomes part of the world. It overcomes everything the world can throw against us, even our faith. Saints, he said to Ezekiel, you prophesy. Because before Ezekiel got to the valley of dry bones, he had already put the capacity to deal with the opposition in Ezekiel before Ezekiel got there. Saints, you are powerful. You are stronger than you know that you are. You are more powerful than you think that you are. That situation is not beyond you. That opposition is not bigger than you. That, that destination that seems so far away, you will get there. I, I remember and, and when, when I use my imagination to play the movie of Joseph's life, I can picture days where Joseph would have been in as a slave in Egypt and he would have been wondering, but this is not what I saw. This is not what was prophesied. This is not the dream that I had. Here I am, my, my hands are in stocks and the bands of slavery are, are, are taped to my wrists. But this is not what I saw. And the devil will probably have tried to whisper to him and say, maybe you did not hear right. Maybe God did not keep his word. Maybe you have sinned. Maybe you have done something wrong. And so that prophecy is not going to come to pass. But all we know is that the Bible says God was with him. For God to have been with him, it means Joseph remained with God. Now because God could be with you, but you like the prodigal son or the younger son in that story in Luke 15, you could go on a journey. You see, for the believer, God does not leave us. We leave God when we, when we no longer pay attention. And we are no longer conscious of the fact that he is with us. You see, for Joseph, he stayed with God. I want to say to you, I don't know what you are going through. Saints, no matter who you are, where you are, we all have our Goliaths. We all have our challenges. No matter who you are, where you are right now, receive this counsel from God. Stay with God. 
stay in the house. I know it's rough. I know you are beginning to change your confession. Don't do that now. Stay in the house. I know you are thinking this thing is not working. Maybe I should go to that Sangoma. No, stay in the house. I know you are thinking that I have been going to church. I have been giving. I have been serving. Why am I going through this? That self-righteousness. Deal with that attitude in your heart, but stay in the house. Stay, stay in the house because the blessing is in the house. The Bible says he has caused the oil that flows from the head of Aaron down his beard, down to his robe. He says, there God has commanded the blessing. God has commanded the blessing in his house. Saints, Ezekiel could have begun to whine and could have begun to complain and could have said that I'm asking you for help and here you are telling me prophesy. But he prophesied as commanded. Ooh, and that's where I want to go. Verse 7. It said, and I prophesied as commanded. You know, Ezekiel could have said, the words will carry greater weight if you, O oh God, will say it. You are here with me. I could say it and I, I will say it, but, but don't you know that you are God Almighty? You are, you are the, the powerful angel of God. If you say it, it will carry more weight than if I say it. And many of us think that way. But Ezekiel understood that if I am prophesying as I have been instructed to prophesy, the word in my mouth is as powerful as the word in God's mouth. Let me say that again. When you take God's word and put it in your mouth, Ezekiel understood and you must settle it in your consciousness that the word in your mouth is as powerful as the word in God's mouth. If God's word will do it, then God's word in your mouth will do the exact same thing. Do you remember, and I think I shared this with you some weeks ago, that the rod of Aaron, the about the first four um, miracles, plagues that hit Egypt during the time of Moses and the deliverance of the children of Israel from over 400 years of captivity, that rod that performed the first four um, plagues in Egypt, the, the turning of the rod into a snake, the release or the turning of the Red Sea or the River Nile rather into blood and two others, they were performed by the rod of Aaron and not the rod of Moses. Did you hear me? They were actually, oh, if you don't believe me, go read your Bible. They were performed by the rod of Aaron and not even the rod of Moses because look, Aaron could have said to Moses, you said to me that God told you that your rod had power. And now that we are about to face opposition, you are asking me to cast my own rod. My rod is useless. God told you that your rod had power. And many of us are thinking like that, that it will not carry as much weight when we say it. It's not true if it's God's word. See, notice what Ezekiel said. I prophesied as I was commanded. Meaning he heard what the word said and he said only what the word said. Saints of God, if we will do the same, the same way it has power when God speaks it or when God spoke it, it will have power as you speak it. So Ezekiel said, oh my goodness, it's going to get interesting. Let me, let me read that verse 7 to you again. He said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Listen to this. He said, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and there was a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Remember, in the last verse, after he had prophesied, was that verse 11? He says, after he had prophesied, the bones came to bone and it was a huge army, meaning tens of thousands of people emerged after he prophesied. Now picture this. When he began to prophesy, he heard a noise and he heard a shaking. Can you imagine how much noise he must have heard? 
the noise would have been so loud, the shaking would have felt like the tremors of an earthquake. Because these were an army. He says it was an innumerable, one translation says, an innumerable army. If, the, if, if you were speaking and there was a noise and then there was a shaking, the whole place would have been vibrating. The whole place would have sounded like, like, like bombs were going off. All of this was happening before the bones came together. Saints, for many of us, we've experienced scenarios like that, where as we began to speak, there was a noise, there was a shaking. It looked like it was getting worse. And you were wondering, why is it that it is just after I began to speak healing over my child that the doctors are now telling me that there is nothing they can do to help him. It is a noise and a shaking. Why is it that it is just after I have applied um, um, to the bank to get that house that my boss is now giving me a letter of retrenchment? Why is it that it is just after I have declared that wealth and riches are in my house uh, that my commission is not being paid? Saints, all of that is a noise and a shaking. Remember when Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower? He said, and when affliction shall arise for the word's sake. Saints, hear what I'm saying. He is not saying in that verse in John chapter 4 that the affliction arose because you received the word. No, he is saying that the affliction has come to challenge that word. Saints, whether you receive the word or not, affliction comes. Affliction did not come because God said it. Affliction has come because affliction affliction comes as long as we are on this world in this world affliction will come Jesus himself puts it this way he said in this world you will face tribulation in this world we will face opposition so it did not come because you got a word it came because the enemy is upset about the word because the enemy understands that every time God gives a word every time God sends a word it means a solution has been sent it means opportunity will be created it means transformation will emerge and so the devil shows up to contend with that word but saints it's a noise and it's a shaking you need to be able to listen to the voice of God beyond the noise you need to remain stable in the midst of the shaking to know that the bone is coming to bone. I don't know whether it looks like it's getting worse. It is a noise and a shaking. Notice that when Ezekiel first heard the noise, can you imagine? So everywhere is quiet. It will be dead quiet. Why? It was the valley of dry bones. Valley of dry bones. It would have been dead quiet, save the voice of the angel that he had heard. After he would have prophesied, dead quiet, then suddenly the noise of millions of bones beginning to move, the noise and the shaking on the ground. He would have probably had an initial fright. Saints, that fright that you experience, that fear that you experience, stand your ground. For God has not given you or I. The spirit of fear, stand your ground. Notice when the earth was shaken and the noise was, was, was sounding, Ezekiel did not start saying, maybe this is not working. Maybe I need to say something else. He kept to what he had said. Since listen, in, in, in the story of the death of Lazarus, do you remember, do you remember that Jesus had said to his disciples that this sickness that Lazarus had was not unto death. Jesus told them after he was told that Lazarus was sick, he told them this sickness is not unto death. A few verses later, the Bible says Lazarus died. This is Jesus, God Almighty. He said it's not unto death and then Lazarus died. Can you imagine the audacity of the devil? Can you imagine the effrontery of death? That even the master, the Messiah, the one in whom all things exist and consist, he said it wasn't unto death, but death still came. It got worse even after Jesus had spoken. So if it looks like it's getting worse, you are in good company. Jesus was there. Jesus faced the same, but Jesus stood his ground. Jesus had settled it that if I have said it, I don't care what it looks like. I said death 
This is not unto death. If death shows its, its ugly head, then we will turn death to life because I have prophesied. Saints, are you prophesying as you have been commanded? What have you heard? Do you know for some of us believers, we, we, we speak once or twice and then we go about our business and we even forget what we have said. We speak once or twice and then situations begin to rise that are contrary and we forget what we have said and then we begin to whine, we begin to pine, we begin to murmur, we begin to complain, we begin to grumble. Saints, every time you speak a word, you sow a seed. The Bible says, Jesus said that the sower sowed the seed. And he says the seed was the word of God. Every time you speak a word, you are sowing a seed. If it's the seed of God's word, it will produce God's results. If it's not, you are perpetrating your affliction. Saints of God, he said he heard a noise and there was a shaking, but he did not shift. He stayed on his word and bone came to bone. I prophesied to somebody watching me right now, bone is coming to bone. In that relationship, bone is coming to bone. Concerning that finances, bone is coming to bone. Concerning that health situation, bone is coming to bone. Saints, prophesy to that business. Prophesy over that child. Prophesy over that nation. Prophesy concerning that situation. Prophesy over your money. Bone is coming to look, we have a few things that I need to share, but I'm going to stop here. I want you right now to begin to prophesy. I don't know what you are facing, but if you understand that God is a keeper of his word and he's the same yesterday, he's the same today, he's the same forever. If Ezekiel could declare it and it came to pass, how much more we that are operating under a better covenant. Saints, don't be moved by that situation. Don't be moved by, by the message that is coming saying that that Lazarus is dead. Don't be moved by the message that is coming saying uh, to Jairus uh, that your daughter is dead. Stand your ground. If you have said it, keep saying it. Did you see? Did you see before you begin to confess that Jesus, he spoke to the fig tree and it did not look like anything had happened. Jesus did not stay there to begin to say, God, what have I done wrong? Why is the fig tree still looking green? Why is the fig tree not dying? He walked away. He stood his ground. He did not entertain any contrary thought in his mind. He walked away. When he was coming back the next day, he did not even stop to observe the fig tree. It was Peter that had to call his attention to the fig tree. Peter said, oh my goodness, the tree has died and Jesus said to him, my God, don't you get this? If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say and it will be done. You will say and it will be done. Do you know what Jesus was saying? In that scripture, it wasn't saying if your faith is so tiny. No, 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 no. He was actually saying, if you think your faith is tiny, no matter what you are facing, according to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no matter the opposition, no matter the chaos, no matter the crisis, no matter the Goliath, if you are facing it, your faith must be enough or else it could not have come up against you. If it came up against you, it is because you can take its head off. So right now for the next few moments, I want you to lift your voice and I want you to prophesy. If you are sick in your body, he says he sent forth his word and it healed them and it delivered them. If there is a problem in your marriage, stand on the word that says uh, that your bed, the marriage, he says the marriage is blessed, the bed is undefiled. I want you to prophesy that if your money has gone funny, I want you to declare wealth and riches are in my house. If your mind is feeling overwhelmed, I want you to declare that you have the mind of Christ. If you are feeling anxiety, and you are feeling fear, I want you to declare God has not given me a spirit that is subject again to fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. I want you to prophesy as you have been commanded. What does it mean? To take the scripture and declare what the word of God says. Lift your voice and begin to declare it. I speak concerning everyone oh God that is battling with sickness in their body. I prophesy even as I have been commanded 
healing and I send forth his word into their body. Be healed and be delivered in the name of Jesus. That deathbed, we turn it around to a bed of life. We turn it around to a bed of life in the name of Jesus. I speak over that relationship that seems like it's getting worse. No, it's not getting worse. I refuse. I declared it to you two weeks ago. I say it again that it is turned around in the name of Jesus. Your marriage bed is undefiled. Your husband will love your, his wife and the wife will submit to the husband in the name of Jesus. So that person battling with your children. I speak concerning your children. The Bible says that they are of the blessing of the Lord. Happy is a man whose quiver is full of them. The Bible says that they are the heritage of God. I declare that they are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your table is surrounded by your children in the name of Jesus. To that person that is struggling with barrenness, I declare it is written. It says that there shall be none barren in the land. I rebuke barrenness from your body in the name of Jesus. That person with a bone condition, it is written in scripture that not one of his bones shall be broken. And so I declare that your bones are refreshed. Your bones are refreshed in the name of Jesus. Somebody prophesy as commanded. You see, we have to go to the communion table. But our work to prophesy is not done. We will go to the table of communion. Remember, the Bible calls it the table of blessing. Do you remember the first time they had the Passover in the book of Exodus? Because our table of communion was Jesus transforming the intent and purposes of that Passover into the new covenant. When they had the first Passover, a few things happened. Those who were sick were healed, meaning the blind saw, the lame walked, the feeble. The Bible says there was none that was feeble amongst them. When they experienced the first Passover, when death, that which was destroying the others in the land, passed over them. Hence, the term Passover, death passed over them. Meaning even when the doctors had prophesied death, death passed over them. Why? Because of the table of blessing. It didn't end there. There were slaves. They had been, they had been disenfranchised of everything that they had. But when they partook of the Passover, those who were broke, their wealth was restored. The Bible says that the wealth of Egypt was transferred to them to the point that Egypt became broke while they became empowered. The table of blessing is one of the ways that we prophesy as commanded. Jesus said, as often as you eat this, as often as you drink this, do it in memory of me. Somebody needs to prophesy. If you have your bread, if you have your, your wine, whatever you are using, crackers and water, um, um, shortbread and grape juice, whatever it is, it is symbolic of the table of blessing. Do you know the blessing in those days was the spoken word? Whenever they were going to be blessed, it wasn't rain from the heaven. The rains manifested the blessing, but the rains were not the blessing. Every time a blessing was to be released, it was released with that which was declared. As we go to this table, you will declare a few things. Oh, because that which is broken, it's bone to bone. Because the impossible, the impossible still happens. I need you to hashtag it. I need you to social media it. I need you to SMS it. I need you to WhatsApp it. Create a whole profile picture of it. The impossible still happens for we prophesy as commanded. The bones were very dry. You know what it means to be very dry? Meaning when you picked up one of the bones, as you picked it up, they were so brittle that the minute you touched them, they will break and, and, and dissipate into sand, into powder. That's how they were. Yet those dry bones lived again. Your dry bones will live again. That area that looks like it has been sucked of life, it will live again. Why? The impossible still happens. Are you ready for the table? 
Let's go to the table of communion. Take the body. Take the body, which is your bread or your biscuit, whatever you have. On the night he was betrayed, Lee Kabra, miracles are about to happen. He took the bread, he broke it, break it, and said, this is my body that is broken for you. As often as you eat this, eat it in memory of me. You may eat. If you have a family, serve your family. You may eat. When supper was ended, he took the cup. He lifted it up, he gave thanks and said, this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that was shed for the remission of sins. As often as you drink this, drink it in memory of me. You may drink. Now I'm about to pray. Remember when Paul spoke about the table of communion, Paul said, it is because you eat and you drink this without understanding that some of you are sick. He said, and some have even died. Meaning, as we eat and drink of this with understanding, sickness is taken from us. Death cannot touch us. Saints of God, if the table could give them, could even restore life and wealth to them, how much more to us? Whose, whose salvation is founded on better promises, better promises. Buy your hearts with me. Stretch forth your hands towards me and let's pray. Leagoti kabadi motus kabayedes. Lebroso kopraga dege dege de bosha. I rebuke death. I rebuke death. For we do not die in, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I declare in the name of Jesus that those that are sick in body, because your body was broken for us, our bodies cannot be broken. And so, bone to bone, in the name of Jesus, we reverse, we reverse the reports of the doctors. In the name of Jesus, I speak even right now concerning anyone facing a crisis. Whatever your crisis is, I declare that the consciousness that God is with you visits your mind now. I declare that you are established in that truth. And because he's with you, nothing can stand against you. I declare that your faith rises in this. You hear a testimony this week. Your story turns around. Your challenge becomes as dust before you in the name of Jesus I speak this over your life I speak this now somebody receive it I speak this now you are delivered you are transformed you are restored by the hand of the Lord in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus name amen somebody begin to check your body check your bank account look I it is the table of blessing dry bones live again saints the impossible still happens and that is your testimony right now I got a testimony this past week where somebody had their debt supernaturally cancelled so almost to the tune actually to the tune of um, about a hundred thousand rand cancelled Cancel. She did a credit check. No judgments. No debt anymore. Everything is it. See, the impossible still happens. It is your turn to prophesy. I don't know what you were expecting. This is your season. Prophesy as commanded. Do not be moved by the noise and the shaking. Prophesy as commanded. Have you been blessed? Did it make sense? Will you act as you have heard of the Lord today? I hope you will. Please stay tuned. We have a few announcements. We're also about to receive our offerings. But I have some personal announcements that I need to share with you. It's going to be very good, very important that you take note of this. Church isn't over. I'll catch you on the other side to share the benediction. Bye for now.
We thank you for joining us for today's online service. Now here's two important questions you must ask yourself. What did the message say to me? And what, if any, is my response? Join us again for our Sunday morning online service with Pastor Tim Grage on YouTube next week Sunday at 10 a.m. For your tithes and offering, here are our banking details. Please note that your heartfelt giving to the Kingdom in this season will aid the many struggling financially in this time and we thank you for your generosity. Welcome back. I hope you got all the announcements. For those of you that have committed to give to the city of Zion in your tithes and your offerings, I want to say thank you. I want to say a big thank you because your giving ensures that we are able to keep bringing this program into you. We're able to continue ministering to the many people, particularly those that have been grossly affected by the whole COVID saga that we all have had to battle with. For those of you that have not come on board to partner with us, remember in the Go Ye series, we explained that we go ye with our money. We send the gospel with our money. Come on board because the gospel, what you have heard today and many more uh, that you have heard in times past needs to go out there. We need to put it in bigger and wider platforms and your giving ensures that we're able to do so. Amen. For those of you that have established in your heart that the city of Zion is your home, we have Zion development classes that are starting from this week. If you, if you were unaware of it and so you've missed today's class, not a problem. From next week, you can still join. What is the Zion development class? It is a set of three classes where we take you through the basics of the faith and we introduce you to who we are as the city of Zion. If you've never done this class, maybe it's the reason why some of the things that we teach are difficult for you to understand. You need to go through this class. It is our process of receiving you formally into the family. It is taught by our pastors. And so you are being taught by the upper echelons of the leadership of the city of Zion. You need to go through this class. Each class it's about five to six weeks. It runs um, online, but also um, um, live in our facility, 93 Grayston Drive in Santon. And it runs just after the first service. So if you're coming in live, and we would prefer that you come in live because it's very different when you are there with the teacher and you are able to ask your questions and you are able to engage. We, we make sure we go through all the COVID protocols, but it will be great. It runs just after the first service and just before the second service. So we're looking at, at about quarter past nine, 9.30, but definitely um, it's over by 10 a.m. So if you come for the first, stay after, you know, finish your service and then go in for your class and leave afterwards or come about 45 minutes earlier before your, your second service and attend the class. I'm looking forward to those of you that have not been through this class to be part of this first um, 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 level one. For those of you that did level one, you are in level two and level two, you are now in level three. You started a journey, finish what you've started. It will bless you, it will empower you. Finally, dawn continues or resumes tomorrow. And I'm starting a series. Look, one of the, the things we need to appreciate is what can I do to ensure that I have a bit more confidence when I prophesy? Because it is your prophesying that brings bone to bone. I will be dealing with that over the next five days, starting from tomorrow, Monday through to fi Friday, 5 a.m., or you can watch it at any other time at your convenience. It will be, this, the title of the series is actually No Condemnation. It is heavy, hard-hitting, it will strengthen you, it will equip you. Amen. I hope you remember the word. I hope you are, you are encouraged and you are willing to stand your ground on the word of God. I really hope so, because God still does the impossible. Amen. Let's share the grace together and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And surely his goodness, his mercies are following us all the days of our lives. And we are the dwelling house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. I'll catch you at dawn or on Tuesday at Tarry with Tim. Bye for now.
Welcome to the city of Zion. Welcome to the city on a hill. This is home. This is our family. This is where we connect. This is where we come alive. It's where we worship. It's where we grow. This is where we encounter God. Where no one is a stranger. And where no one is alone. This is where we find purpose. Where you are loved. And it's where we serve. This is where we learn, and it's where change begins. This is where people matter and hope is real. This is where God is glorified, where God transforms. We are God's people. We are the city of Zion.